When discussing the veil, very often it's framed within a rights context. You know, it's a woman's right to choose. It's her right to dress however she wants. And of course, at the very best, using this sort of language is deceptive because a woman might submit to wearing a veil. She might comply with religious regulations and wear the veil, but there is no free choice involved, you know. And the other point that's important to make is that the the Islamists use rights language in order to keep women in their place and to restrict women's rights and control and police their bodies. So in fact, if we talk about rights, uh, when we talk about the veil, it's the rights of the Islamists, it's the rights of the patriarch, it's the rights of the male guardian, in fact, to impose these restrictions on women, to erase them from the public space, to control their sexuality and their bodies, and to make sure that women know their place, which is one that is quiet, not seen, and not heard in the public space. So, you know, I think when we're speaking about the issue of the veil, it's really important to put it in that context. It's not a right, it's not a choice, even though women, some women might comply and some women might submit. Using rights language is like saying foot binding, for example, the practice um, in China where women were, uh, had their feet broken so that, and then, you know, uh, restricted in, in really small shoes as a way of preventing them from moving too far away from their male guardians. If the veil is a right and a choice, then foot binding is just another uh, footwear, you know. So I think it's important when we're discussing this issue to say that, yes, we understand there's huge amounts of xenophobia, anti-Muslim bigotry, uh, you know, and and it's important that women and men are defended irrespective of their background and beliefs. But that's not the same with defending the veil. I think if you actually want to defend women and their rights, whatever their backgrounds, we have to be able to criticize the veil, criticize religious restrictions on women's rights and movement. This is a woman's rights issue. It is the duty of every secularist, every feminist, every humanist in this day and age to stand with women against uh, the veil, particularly against compulsory veiling rules, uh, stand with uh, the women in Iran who are facing uh, decades-long imprisonment for transgressing veiling rules in Iran, Uh, women in Saudi Arabia who are wearing their abayas inside and out as a protest to veiling rules, to women in Turkey, to women in Algeria, to women in um, Iraq, Afghanistan, and of course in the heart of Europe. You know, it is our duty, each and every one of our duty, to stand up against the veil, defend people unequivocally, but at the same time reject and challenge religious impositions on women's bodies. This is the feminist fight of this century. The fight against uh, the veil is a fight for women's equality, for women's liberation. It's the fight that every feminist, secularist, humanist has to be involved in. It's our duty to be involved in this fight, defending people irrespective of their background and beliefs, but unequivocally challenging tools that religion uses uh, uh, in order to control women, to police their bodies, to silence women and to erase them from the public space.